This is the chapter 11, section 4 podcast, and this is on meiosis, which is, you'll see, is all very similar to mitosis, but we'll get to that in a minute. So, uh, we know that each organism inherits a single copy of uh, each of its genes from each of its parents, and there's a mom and a dad and their, and their son. And so, the gametes uh, form in a process that separates the two sets of genes so that each gamete ends up with just one set of the uh, of the genes of one of the alleles for each pair of alleles that every person has for a gene. So, to explain this further, let's look at chromosome numbers. All organisms have different number of chromosomes, and for example, a fruit fly has eight chromosomes, and uh, it gets four from the male parent and four from the female parent. Now I'm highlighting that just to stress not that these are terms you're going to have to write down, but you have to understand that it gets some of its chromosomes from its mother, some of its chromosomes from its father, just like you did. You get some of your chromosomes from your mother, some of your chromosomes from your father. So these two sets of chromosomes are homologous, meaning uh, they're corresponding chromosomes. So four chromosomes came from the male parent. Each of the four chromosomes from the male parent has a corresponding chromosome from the female parent. So we, here's a couple more terms we have to know is diploid. Diploid is uh, a cell that has um, both sets of homologous chromosomes. That's a diploid cell. So we represent that with a symbol 2n. And for Drosophila, which is fruit flies, we know that the diploid number is 8, which means 2. We can write it as 2n equals 8. For humans, for example, our diploid number is 46. We have 46 total chromosomes, 40, uh, which is 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. So gametes of sexually reproducing organisms contain only one set of chromosomes and therefore only one set of genes. These cells are haploid. They are represented by the symbol N, and the haploid number is for fruit fly is four, which is half of the number that is found in all the body cells. So what happens during the process of meiosis? Meiosis is a reduction of the chromosomes in cells so that you only have ha one set of chromosomes in the cell that results as the gamete. So we have two divisions, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. And at the end of meiosis 2, the diploid cell then into meiosis is now four haploid cells. So we start with one diploid cell and we end up with four haploid cells. So here's an overview of the first part of meiosis, which we'll call meiosis 1, the first half of meiosis. It looks very much the same like mitosis. We um, the first thing you start with is in interphase 1, we duplicate the DNA in interphase 1. Then the pairs, um, each chromosome pairs up with its corresponding homologous chromosome into what's called a tetrad. This is a tetrad. It's two chromosomes that are homologous, meaning they code for the same, same genes, and they pair up. So, and so, therefore, we have four chromatids in a tetrad. Um, one, two, three, and four. So, when the cro cro homologous uh, chromosomes form a tetrad, they exchange portions of their chromatids in a process called crossing over. So, what you can see is, is that if each of these letters is a section of the chromosome, uh, cro I'm sorry, chromatid, then they will exchange the uh, portion of the chromatid that codes for the same thing. So you see, we can start with a, maybe let's say this is from mom, this chromosome, this chromosome is for dad. When they cross over, the one uh, section here in the pink part swaps for this orange part here, and you end up with two chro the chromosomes are slightly different. So this produces new combinations of alleles. 
So once again, now spindle fibers attach to the chromosomes, but look at the way they're lined up at the equator. They're lined up very differently. The fibers pull the homologous chromosomes toward the opposite ends of the cell. So you end up with one chromosome going to one cell and one chromosome going to the other cell. Remember in mitosis, it pulled the chromatids away from each other. Here it's pulling the homologous chromosomes away from each other. Nuclear membranes form just like in tel telophase and the cell separates into two cells. So now we have two cells from meiosis one and the alleles are different from each other. Uh, they're different than the diploid cells that entered meiosis one. So that's meiosis one again as you can see. Here's the whole process again. Now meiosis two is the second part of meiosis. This is a second my meiotic division. Neither cell undergoes chromosome replication. This is important. It's, it's dividing a second time, but it does not copy before this division. Each of the cell's chromosomes have two chromatids. And here's meiosis 2. You can see here's our original cell that div divided, so we had two at the end. And you're going to see at the end we're going to have four. And we'll look at this picture again. So here's what happens in prophase uh, 2. We, we have two uh, haploid daughter cells. Each has the half the number of chromosomes. The chromosomes line up at the center. This looks a lot like mitosis. The chromatids separate and move to towards opposite ends just like in mitosis. And now meiosis 2 results in four haploid daughter cells. If you remember we started with cells that had four chromosomes and now we're left with four cells that have two chromosomes. So once again you can see and there's meiosis 2 again. You can see our original cell had 1, 2, 3, 4 chromosomes. Now we end up with 4 cells with 2 chromosomes. So in males, this results in 4 equal sized gametes called sperm. And each of these are haploid cells. You can see the end there showing that they're haploid. So we start with 4 chromosomes in the, in the body cell. And then through meiosis, we end up with 4 cells with just two chromosomes and these go on to become the sperm. In females, same thing except one egg develops and we develop three polar bodies, haploid polar bodies, which are not used in reproduction. Um, and once again, we start with a cell that has four chromosomes, we end up with an egg that only has two chromosomes. So how's meiosis different from mitosis? The mitosis where you end up with two genetically identical diploid cells in meiosis we end up with four genetically different haploid cells meaning haploid having half the uh, genetic material that the diploid cell has so so once again cells produced my, by mitosis and that's right here you end up with the same number of chromosomes and alleles as the original cell they're identical and this allows an organism to grow and replace cells and we know that some organisms reproduce asexually by mitosis. They make an exact copy of themselves for the new organism. In meiosis, the cells produced by meiosis have half the number of chromosomes as the parent cell. In this example, we have to start with a cell that has four. We're going to end up, I'm sorry, we start, here's meiosis right here. We start with a cell that has four chromosomes. We end up with cells that have two chromosomes. They're genetically different. So they have half the DNA and on top of that they've been crossing over so they've been swapping parts of uh, their genetic material and this is how sexually reproducing organisms produce gametes so this I love this phrase right here in mitosis you copy once you divide once so you end up with the original amount of chrom chromosomes and in meiosis you copy once but you divide twice so you end up with half the number of chromosomes.